All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon, and in this video, we're going to be in the 135 pound division where once again, people are wondering who Gervonta Davis will fight next. And once again, the person that I think, one of the two people that I think have the best chance to beat Gervonta Davis is once again speaking up and saying that he wants that fight. Uh, people are doing a lot of complaining about who Gervonta Davis will probably be fighting next as if we got a choice and as if he has a choice is from, from what I can see. Uh, however, Gary Russell Jr., is back searching for that fight, says he's coming out of retirement and is going to be moving up in weight, trying to get it. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon, and in this video, we're going to be in the 135 pound division where uh, Gervonta Tank Davis should be making a decision relatively soon about who it is that he is going to fight next. Many people think that it will be Isak Cruz, number one, because Isak Cruz is the number one contender in the WBA, and there has been rumblings that they very well may order the fight uh, to take place. Uh, however, there's somebody else that is putting their name in the hat and somebody who I definitely want to see ha have an opportunity to get that fight and will answer a lot of question marks for Gervonta Davis. And that is get Mr. Gary Russell Jr. Now, before I get into that, though, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, please accept my invitation to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos. And if you are a longtime subscriber and supporter of the channel, thank you so much for continuing to do so. But let's talk about it, man, because look, um, there is uh, a lot going on in the 135 pound division, uh, but really it for every practical in every practical sense, there's really no king to that division and people We'll say, no, the, the king of that division is Devin Haney because Devin Haney holds three of the four belts. Now he holds three of the four belts, not all four of the belts, because the WBC, he's been moved to the to the um, champion in recess. And the winner of whoever Shakur Stevenson fights for that vacant belt will be the WBC champion after that. And more than likely, that is going to be Frank Martin of uh, Man Down Promotions, uh, Errol Spence Jr.'s uh, promotional company. Those two guys will get that shot. So, and there is most likely Regis uh, Regis Progre and Devin Haney will be fighting for Regis Progre's WBC belt at 140. And if Devin Haney wins that fight, then Devin Haney's going to stand there, has to stay there because he's only going to have a certain amount of time to choose between whether or not he is going to stay and be the WBC champion at 140 or whether he's going to come down, drain himself back down to 135 pounds, which he has really no business doing whatsoever. And if you hadn't seen the Errol Spence Terrence Crawford fight that took place and how Errol looked in that, how somebody looks when they may have stayed at a weight class a little too long, uh, Devin Haney probably has enough sense to know that he doesn't want to do that. So those belts are going to wind up going up in uh, going up into the air for people to grab. Well, at least two of them are the IBF and the WBO will go up and be up for um, grabs. I don't think that the WBA will be up for grabs because I'm pretty sure they'll just do away with that super designation. And Gervonta Davis will be the way, the only champion, only WBA champion in uh, in that division. Now, there is somebody else, though, that is coming out and saying that they want to fight Gervonta Davis. And it is a fight that I support 100 percent, man. And that is Gary Russell Jr., Gary Russell Jr., if you're not familiar with him, is one of the best 126 pound fighters, if not the best 126. Well, I would say he's the second best 126 pounder that I've seen in, uh, 
in at least, well, yeah, in the last decade, last, she was one of the best of the century. Kind of hard to say because I got to remember when exactly the time was that maybe a Juan Manuel Marquez was at 126. Kind of got to look back into that into that time frame. Um, however, man, I know Manny Pacquiao was at 126, but I think he may have been 126 in the late in the late 90s not quite can't quite re- recall that time frame but gary russell jr is most definitely one of the best uh featherweights that we've seen this century uh did not get a lot of opportunities to prove it because he there has been so were so many people that came through the 126 pound division when he was the cha- when he was the champion there that refused to fight him he did get a he did get one fight originally i do believe that was it may have been for the it was either for the WBO or the or the WBC where he fought Vasily Lomachenko in a very good fight against Vasily Lomachenko by the way very good fight against Lomachenko at 126 i think Lomachenko won that fight but uh, he wasn't, let me put it this way, uh, and, uh, Vasily Lomachenko wasn't matri- matrixing all over the place. And Vasily Lomachenko moved up to 135 and had success and easier fights at 135 than he had with Gary Russell Jr. at 120 at 126. So if Gary Russell Jr. wants to move up, he's definitely not going to go back to 126. Wants to go up to 135 pounds. Look, man, in my book, he hasn't lost a fight since he lost to Vasily Lomachenko. The fight that he, where he lost his championship against Marcus, Mark Magsayo, to me, was I thought that was a robbery. And that he had lost, that basically he had beat Mark Magsayo with one hand. So now that uh, that uh, Gary Russell Jr. has had his so- shoulder surgery and he's moving up in weight, I think that he has deserved a shot at, you know, at, a, uh, at least done enough to get a voluntary shot against a champion at 135 pounds. I can tell you all kind of people, all kind of people that had the ability, you know, who who basically got that off of um, the accolades that they've had in fights, even if he's coming off of a loss. Now, I, and again, I don't really consider that a loss. I consider the more significant thing, the fact that he, come, that he came off of an, that he came off of an injury. But I think from the from all kind of different perspectives, this is a good fight to this is a good fight to make. Now, Gary Russell Jr. may not be. Um, people will say, "Well, no, I want to see the Shakur Stevenson fight, obvious, or the or the Frank Martin fight for Gervonta Davis, or the Devin Haney fight for Gervonta Davis." I believe um, I believe all of those. All of those things are good things that can take place. And if they, if you were to say those fights should take be- place before Gary Russell Jr. That's fine. I don't have a problem with it. However, if you just like I said in the beginning of the video, uh, those options, those options are not uh, at this moment in time are not there for Gervonta Davis. The, the options for Gervonta Davis are uh, Isak Cruz uh, and Isak Cruz, which people are complaining about. Then you have uh, uh, Edwin DeSantos and uh, him. And then probably, but everybody else is over there at ESPN. I mean, like Keyshawn Davis and and a guy on the zone like Andy Cruz, who just had his first professional fight, professional fight. They're not really in the mix right now. But as far as Gary Russell Jr. saying he wants to do it, man, I would support and love to see that fight from a monetary sense. The fight, I suspect that that fight would do very well. But one of the most important things to keep in mind about um Gary Russell Jr. is man. Gary Russell Jr. is one heck of a fighter, man. All of this, this, this blasting that people have done on him about his inactivity and all of this and all of that, people can really do miss how excellent a fighter that guy is, man. He can do everything in the ring, man. Fast, great defense, very effective aggression, during generalship, clean and effective punching, de- all ever, all scoring criteria he's got in his spades. And I think Gary Russell Jr. is most definitely one of the most underrated fighters of this century. But anyway, that's my take on the matter. You let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.